We've been doing a series, and we did last week. I didn't get to finish the protective walk that God has for believers. So I want to finish that sermon up from last week with you this week. We've had communion. We've moved into this realm. So we've been doing a series called The Truth About. These are different truths that Jesus taught about in our life that we are addressing to help Christians to walk properly. Can you say amen? All right, so good morning to you, church. You are God's chosen people, you know, a royal priesthood. Did you try to? Okay, I thought you were waving at me. Hi, sis. <laughs> amen. All right, the Spirit of God, when I was in prayer the, uh, last week, gave me a word for you so if you want to write it down because we don't record our sermons anymore we just put them on the air and if you're able to archive them we do but you know we used to be able to have recordings of each one starting out first with the cassettes and then the cds and but we stopped doing that you know we just project it out if you want it take notes okay God gave me this word, and the word is, well, what is going on with the earth today? He is separating the sheep from the goats. Everyone say amen. amen. Now, sheep follow, goats follow too, but every once in a while they get a goat complex. Both of them are saved. So right now God is separating the Christians that want to follow Christ and the Christians by, no, I'm not putting anyone down, listen, the Christians that are not following God, they're sort of following themselves, but yet they still love God. You see the difference? One follows God, wants all the benefits that he can get from the Lord. The other loves God, but they're sort of mixed with doing their own thing. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing our own thing as long as doing our own thing isn't going to hurt us. Can you say amen? God doesn't want you afflicting yourself. Not only that, but he says, revival is coming. This is what God told me. A revival is beginning to burn through the land like a fire. God is saying, I will have my way. Those who choose to listen and walk with me will experience a move of my spirit that I call the latter rain. I am making ready my church like a Gideon's army, he said. And I had to reflect Gideon's army. Gideon started off with thousands of army guys. And then it, God noticed that the army guys weren't paying a bit of attention. They were just there in name only. And then God began to whittle them down. And finally he gets this whole group of them down by the lake. And then he says, have them drink water. And so this whole army goes down by the lake and they're drinking water. Some are sticking their whole face in the water and just sucking up as much as they can get. And the others are looking and being alert in case the enemy is around and they're drinking from their hands being alert. Now, which one do you think God chose? The one that slammed their whole face into the water? Could, somebody could crawl up behind them and kill them? No, the ones that are watching and alert. And that's God's prophecy to us in the church, especially in the United States. Are you asleep like many goats? Or are you now waking up to being a sheep, following your shepherd? Now remember, God gave us a walk that every one of us can follow, that we are totally protected. He said neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, neither height nor depth, nor any other created creature shall be able to separate you from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. Say, that's me. Now, because we have been sold a bag of rocks, what do you mean, called religion, for example, I was told, the Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And to me, that meant the Lord will bless you one day, and he'll have a tough time with you the next day because you've been a bad boy. That is not the truth. That's a lie. Here's the truth. The truth is, Job, because he was ignorant, he knew no better. He said, the Lord gave to me, and he's taken it away now. And this little sawed-off Christian boy 
not older than probably 20, come up to Job and he says, hey, God isn't doing this. You did this by your big mouth and marrying the wrong type of person and running around being in fear. And it says Job capped his mouth and he repented and God doubled his blessing. Now, it's one thing to be corrected, but for a kid? How many here know God cannot do anything evil? In the Old Testament, the things that look that God was doing, he was punishing something you don't know or maybe not aware. In the Old Testament, Satan was the God of this world and he was in charge. The only way God could operate is if some humans asked for God to get involved. Abraham, all the way down to the, the patriarchs of old. You have it in chapter 11 of Hebrews. But until that God is asked, he can't get involved. Then we found out that one day Jesus came, didn't he? Jesus bound up Satan. He spoiled his goods, that's you and I. And he told the devil, he says, from now on, all your powers are broken. All your powers are crushed. The only ability that the devil has, listen to me carefully, is to deceive. He doesn't have power to heal you. He doesn't have the power to your key to your back door. He only has the ability to deceive you out what you let him get. We call it a con artist. He runs a con on you since you were young. And he's been running that con. And now you've given your life to the Lord. And now you need to learn. So he still runs the con on you and says, hey, let's not get you to really understand the Bible. Let's get you over in this bag of rocks. God loves you, but he's not going to totally always protect you. Sometimes he's going to let you go through the mud and, and through the crud. <laughs> and all through the flood. None of that is gospel, but sure sounds like a bag of rocks to me. Hello? The disciples came to Jesus because they didn't know any better. Besides, during the time of Judah, when Jesus was there, they believed, a lot of the Jewish people believed in reincarnation. Something God told them to stay away from when they go into the promised land, but they began to practice some of those dark arts. And so when the disciples came to Jesus and they saw this man who was born blind, they said, Jesus, why was this man born blind? Was it his parents? Or was it something he did? Do you know what Jesus said? He says, it's not. Neither. He says, I've come to work the works of him that sent me. And we all read in that like, well, God did it so he could heal him. God made him blind so he could heal him. That's a sack of rocks, folks. No. Adam sinned. Because Adam sinned and we were in the loins of Adam in his blood. When you and I procreated down through all that, some people are born physically challenged some people are born blind some people are born deaf but it has nothing to do with god it has everything to do with adam's sin that's why it's very important that we as christians don't blame the condition of this planet on god god has to work with man and who's the god of this world it says satan is who's the uh, prince of the air Satan is. What is Jesus? He's Lord of all. So what happened when Jesus came and he bound the devil? He said, now Satan, you have to leave him alone. You can sell them anything they want, but they're going to choose me instead of you, devil. And we find out that God positioned himself, and this is so, I mean, it took me years to get this. He, God positioned himself that we come to him out of our own choice, not we're forced to. Satan forces us. Here, try a little of that Coke. Man, I stuffed my nose so full of a bled. Who, who's lying to me? 
Satan, but that was a long time ago. So he has an alternative he sells, and God has the truth. But God gave you the right to choose daily which you're going to follow that day. Are you going to follow yourself? Are you going to follow the suggestions of the enemy? Are you going to meet with me, get my programming, and just simply follow me and enjoy your life? God wants you to laugh. He wants you to, to enjoy your life. And think about it. You can go to sleep at night and not worry about your conscience. Are you with me? Now, I just set the stage, so go with me to John chapter 10, please. I believe that God will really meet with you if you choose to really meet with him. And it takes a real man or a woman to surrender and say, God, I've blown it. I really have. So before I came to Jesus, I was an adversary to God. But when I came to Jesus, I said, Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. Forgive me. And an adversary now became a child. You see, if you have accepted Jesus in your heart, you're a child of God, not an adversary. Every other human being in the world, if they don't have God in them, they still work for the adversary. So God has to treat them differently. But for a child of God like you, say I'm a child of God, God lives in you doesn't he? And if you would let him have a say once in a while, you would know he was really there. He hasn't left you. You could be sticking a needle in your arm. God hasn't left you. I've talked to a lot of addicts when I was away from the church, and I was traveling with my mom, and I've seen a lot of addicts and a lot of people that really still love the Lord, but they're bound because of the lies of the devil. There's hope for all of us. Don't sit there and let the devil say, well, you can't come to church because you're not all cleaned up yet. You don't get cleaned up before you come to church. Unless well, take a shower and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> you get cleaned up when you walk with Jesus. He's the only one that can clean us up and work with us daily. Are you with me? All right. Under the shepherd's care, this is the last part. John chapter 10, look at verse 1. A couple of points I want to give you. Number one, remember Adam gave the planet over to who? Satan. Satan owned the planet in the Old Testament. It wasn't until that Jesus died and rose again he got it back. Hello? So when you read this part with me, just listen, I'm going to clarify. Verse 1 says this, Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter into the earth the sheepfold by the door has to be born here, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and the robber. Who's the thief in the Bible? Satan is. Right? Was he born here? No, but you were. So in order for him to have any power over you, he's got to come to you when you're young and start programming you to hit that little magic button. Every time that little magic button is hit, you go off. Who do you think sets us up? Now, remember, there's two of you. Everyone say, there's two of me. I thought so. There's the old you, the flesh. That's the one that gets upset all the time. That's the one that spews and cusses and does all that stuff. And then there's the real you, the new man in Christ, who's filled with God. So you are a schizophrenic. No. <laughs> no, there's two of you. Your flesh wants to go this way, and your spirit wants to follow the Lord. It's all through the scripture of the New Testament. He says, for the flesh doesn't want to serve God, and the spirit doesn't want to serve the flesh. They are contrary. So you cannot do the things that you want. But if you be led of the spirit, you're not under that obligation or that bondage. In other words, God will show you how to break loose from that old man, you know? And that's what God wants you to do. Jesus, our shepherd, is going to lead us out. That's a process of life. That's a process of time. Are you with me? So you have to be born legally in this planet to have any say in this planet. And Jesus was born in this planet, wasn't he? 
God could not just yell from a planet saying, hey, you straighten up in there, you test tube called the earth. No, I need to come down in there. You got to ask me to come into that test tube. And so God came down into the earth, okay? And he set it all up and he said, okay, I'll set it up like it was before. If you want me, call on me. If you don't, I'll stand patiently till you do. So there are people out there in the world that God loves with all his heart, but God is not in, actively involved in their life because they're not, they don't know to call on God. They think God's their enemy. How many times have you were told about the hypocrites in Christian churches and the devil just got on your shoulder and says, see, you don't need to go to church. Hey, you don't need to go to the hospital either because there's sick people there. <laughs> You see how dumb we think? Without God, your thinking cannot be trusted. Let's go on. Now, but he who enters by the door, naturally born here, is the shepherd of the sheep. Who's our shepherd? Jesus. To him, the doorkeeper, or the Holy Spirit, opens. And the sheep hear his voice. Everyone say, I belong to God. God lives in me. I need to pay attention to my shepherd. See, there's a lot of voices going on out there. A lot of radio stations and different things. Did you know you're being pulverized with all kinds of electronic wavelengths and, and, and all kinds of things? You're being, you're like, you're in a real weak microwave. Mm -hmm. Hello. You want to feel weird sometimes standing underneath a big, heavy duty power line for about 10 minutes. <laughs> anyway, moving right along. How about you don't? <laughs> Amen. Oh, how about just pass on that, Pastor Kerry? It says, to him the door keeps. You see, the Holy Spirit, last week we told you, the Holy Spirit runs the kingdom and the power of God now. And it's those that have the mark of Christ on them. Listen, not the mark of the beast. The mark of Christ on them that the Spirit of God recognizes. It isn't you that impresses God. It's the fact that you have Jesus in you. Can you say amen? Now, who's the devil afraid of? Who kicked the devil's head and booty? Who, keep, who keeps kicking it every day? Who lives in you? So are you fighting the enemy or are you letting Jesus in you do it? See, sometimes we think we're fighting the enemy. So we've got to talk just right. We've got to walk just right. No, you've got the whole thing backwards. You're trying to push the cart. Follow God who lives in you. He's got the greatest plan for you. He's got that only plan for you. And he's got another plan for you. And another plan for you. But most Christians are too ignorant what that plan is. You've been sold rocks. Religion. Oh, I really haven't had a great week, Mom. I really don't want to go to church. You better run to church because Satan's right on your head. Okay, let's move on. <clears throat> so, say, greater is he that lives in me than he that lives in the world. Satan, look out because I'll turn Jesus loose on you if you bug me. Now, see, that's your aggressiveness. That's okay. But to sit around and fight like you're beating the air and, and rebuke and tell your horse, mm -mm. that's just deception. I can whisper Jesus and Satan will tremble. So can you. That's the lie. Only the pastors have this special anointing. All you, excuse my expression, all the rest of us are peons. Sounds like some... Uh, some politicians I know. You can't think for yourself, so we'll think for you. <laughs> Please don't. I don't like the results. Besides, once, once you follow your shepherd, everything else seems like almost second and third and fourth place. Amen? You get up in the morning, and God says to you, good morning, Carrie. What are you going to do? Good morning, Sherry. I've been waiting for you. 
Can you feel him waiting for you? How often do you put him away on the side? I'm not trying to make you feel bad. There's this really heavy anointing just moved in here. And God said, I've been waiting for you. Come, be with me. I want to show you this walk. I want to show you how you can walk. Satan can't touch you. Whew, wow. All right, so let's get into this. Aren't you done already? I got lunch, Pastor Kerr. There you go. You're going to conquer the world. <laughs> Having a real struggle over which kind of pizza you want to eat. <laughs> All right. So I'm just messing with you. So look what he says. And when he brings us out his own sheep, Jesus came to rescue us. We're in a rescue program. What's he eventually going to do? Well, he's going to take us home. That's what he's eventually going. But he's led us out of bondage like the Egyptian. I mean, out of the Israelite out of Egypt. Isn't he? You were a sinner. Now you're being saved by grace. Hello. You still have mistakes. You still make plenty of things that fall short. But you are now a child of God, and God lives in you. And he says, my sheep will hear my voice because you get used to being with God. Now listen. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him. Not their self-will, not their fears. They follow him. How do they know? How do I know to follow him? Because you meet with him first thing. Get your, in, your marching orders for the day. Well, what if I don't hear anything? It's okay. Get up and march. Who said you have to hear something and a bell has to go off? And, you know, no. First of all, God wants to see how serious you are. How regularly are you going to do something like that? And this is, you really, really want what I have for you? Well, how bad do you want it? Listen to this. My sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they by, by no means will they follow a stranger. How many hear some pretty strange stuff there on the news? Pretty weird, whacked out stuff. Doesn't sound like normal, does it? Good is evil and evil is good. Hello? And it just sounds off. That's, this is Satan's time. You should be focusing on Jesus. It's, it's, it's full of flaws as we are. That's why we need Jesus. Then listen to this. For the voice of a stranger, they will not follow. Now, the door of the sheepfold is the Holy Spirit and being born here naturally. So drop down to verse 27, John 10. It goes on further to say, my sheep hear my voice. Let me ask you, where does God live? Everyone, point right here. He lives in your gut. He lives in your spirit, man. Okay? All right? If I can describe it even more, he's in all the molecules of your blood. Your spirit dwells in your blood. And your spirit looks just like you. If it leaped out of your body, it pushes right up onto your inside of your skin. So it looks just like you without missing hair. <laughs> And people think, hello. So when you jump out of yourself, like for example, let's say you die early and your spirit goes to heaven, you'll recognize everybody because they look just like them. They're not little floating poofaloofas, you know, floating around. No, you have structure and God's going to build you a new body. Are you saying amen? <laughs> amen. So those of us that are alive when he comes, you'll be standing there maybe sleeping, standing, and God will go boom, like that, and your whole body will change. All the corruption in your body will leave, and you'll have a glorious light body. And you immediately go to meet him in the air. All within a minute of a split second. Hello. Now, I'm looking forward to that day. I certainly don't want to be, you know, doing something I shouldn't be when that time happens. All right, so let's go on. My sheep shall hear my voice, and I know them. Does God know you? Sure he does. How well does he know you? 
Now, that's a good thought. I'm not, I'm not putting you down. I'm just saying he knows about us. He, he thought of us before we were born. He knows all about us. But how well does he know us? Have we said, Lord, sit down with me and share? You have that right, you know. Oh, God, you ask asking God to come sit with you. No, he promised he would. Bag of rocks again, huh? <laughs> Feeling unworthy. Stop that. If you were unworthy, you wouldn't be at church today. He loves you. Now, let's stop thinking about ourselves and really focus on God. All right, so look what he says. He says, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Listen, if you got saved today, and somehow you walked out and was hit with a semi, you're going to heaven. So you shouldn't be concerned about death. You should be concerned about your family making it. You should be concerned about the people you love, that they have Jesus in their heart. And you say, well... That's a, am I supposed to really? Yes, you are. Because there isn't any hope in this world. This world's going to be redone. Amen. Now, a guy comes up to you, Sherry, and he says, you can live in your old house, but I built you this new house. Everything is top of the line. And you go, well, what's the catch? No catch. It's just your choice. Would you like to live in your old house? Toilet doesn't flush all the time. It freezes in the winter. I'm just making it up. She doesn't live in a place like that. <laughs> I did. I had to dig my first pit toilet, you know, years ago. Hallelujah, it was a great time. Fell in at once too. That's another story. But, so he says, you wanna live in the old house? Or do you wanna live in this new house I made for you? How about you guys? You want to live in your old house? Or do you want to live in the new house that God has made for you? Pinch yourself and say, this is my old house. I'm tired of living in it. Better. Because the scripture says in 2 Corinthians that we groan within ourselves waiting to be clothed from our new house from on high. As long as you are at home in your body, your mind is away from the Lord. But when your mind is on the Lord, your mind's away from your selfish body. <laughs> so to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And to be present with the Lord is to forget about yourself. Isn't that cool? It's not any harder than that. All right, you with me? Let's get into this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Look at the rest of this. It says, my, it says, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Look at this next phrase. <coughs> Excuse me. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. What does that mean? Can God, uh, is he clumsy? Does he fumble at the third <laughs> yard line? Lord, don't drop me. Listen. Listen. What he's trying to say is, if you allow him to be your shepherd, there isn't one thing the devil can do to ruin your salvation. There isn't one thing he can do to pluck you out of God's hands. Now, I'm not talking about once saved, always saved, like a bunch of bozos preach, okay? Go out there and sin all you want because God still loves you. Listen, you're going to sin anyway. The whole idea is that you got God on the inside of you. Can you say Amen. And God has a plan for you, and he says, I'm not going to sit here and let the devil pluck you out of my hands. How many believe that? So I always used to do, and I, I still do, I like to use pictures. So imagine me with two big bodyguards. I've got Derek, and I've got Scott. Okay, I'm in high school, and I'm a scrawny little guy like I was. Do you think people are going to pick on me with those two dudes around? Well, they might try, but no. They won't be able to do it at all. Hello? I'll just say, Derek. Yeah. 
I love you, brother. Please forgive me. No, it's just uh, the point I'm trying to make is you've got God in you. Bigger than Scott and Derek, and I not mean size, but they're muscly, you know? That's what I'm talking about. They're muscly. You got, you know, you got God. That's all the power. And yet, why are you wrestling so hard with your walk? Ever ask you, yourself the question? Well, that's just the way our walk is. That's a bag of rocks. What I'm about to read you is the truth. Now, you can either think one way or you can actually accept the truth. Which is it? Look, no one will pluck you out of my hand. And not only that, but you belong to the Father and no one will put you or pluck you out of the Father's hand. Are you with me? So say, I am God's child. No one can remove me from him. Now, we know that Psalms 23. So let me read it to you real quickly. Okay, and then I want to go into Psalms 91, and we'll finish with you, okay? Psalms 23 real quickly says, but remember this is Old Testament. So who is our shepherd? Jesus. Where does he live? In our heart. Well, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit does, but he, our shepherd lives in our heart, right? So the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. What does it say in James? It says that every man's tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust. Want is a lustful need expressed. A lustful need expressed. He says, if you walk with me, I'll take away your lustful needs and fulfill your life so you don't pull away from me. The warning given to the Israelites when they entered into the promised land, he says, when you enter a home and live in a home that you didn't build, when you eat from vegetables and food that you didn't grow, when you spend money that you didn't earn, be careful that you forget not the Lord thy God. Amen. Who bought you. And we have a tendency when all things are going good, who do we forget about? We have a tendency. So make sure that we don't suffer too much from that. All right, let's go on. I shall not want. He maketh me to lay down in green pastures. The word make it means if you can't eat, he'll even move your lips and set you in the green pastures. So in other words, you haven't got an excuse. Here you are laying in the green pasture and you say, oh God, why, why? Hey, you're laying in a green pasture. I am? <laughs> yeah, he, that means he's going to take care of you. He leads you beside still waters. Hello, can you say amen? So I love still waters. I can drink all I want. Now, we covered all this a little bit last week, so I'm not going to cover it a whole lot. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of doing right for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I, I asked pastors, do you know what the valley of shadow of death is? I couldn't believe they had no answer. I says, it's the earth. The earth has fallen. It's full of death. Duh. Of course, I didn't say that to him. I had a guy one time, he, he hated me. He was the neighboring pastor. And so what I would do is we would have these pastoral meetings. And he'd hate it because I'd show up. And whenever I show up, I'd sit next to him. <laughs> I'm pretty ornery. Especially if you're playing games and you call yourself a Christian, I'm going to blow you away. What do you mean by that? I'm going to say, what the heck are you doing? I asked him the question. I says, you already hate me. You're collecting my teaching tapes. You're running around telling everybody I'm a false teacher. Let me just ask you this simple question. And he says, what? He had his elders all around, you know, I'm so dangerous. And I says, tell me what the main theme of the Bible is. Did you know you couldn't tell me? I says, it's Jesus, dude. See ya. Here's a pastor of a church. Couldn't even tell you what the Bible is about. That's dangerous. Some of you got questions you really need to ask. And I got the time for you. I might not have the answers, but I got the time for you. Let's talk. No sense you believe in something that really isn't the truth. Can you say amen? 
And in fact, all of us are a product of some bad belief. We all are. And we're learning to wash that out of us. Say amen, somebody. So he, he I love this. I, and he says, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they come me. Those are weapons. The shepherd uses the rod to pelt it at the wolf. Jesus is not going to let the devil come near you without him pelting them with the rock. The great shepherd, can you say amen? But you think you got to throw the rock. Not in the New Testament. You just let the rock throw through it. Amen. Lead me to the rock. All right, so it goes on further and it says, And I will fear no evil for you are with me, your rod and your staff, because they fight for me, comfort me. You prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. We just had communion. There's a live devil out there in the world. There's wars. People are dying. All kinds of crazy things go, and you and I are sitting here at the Lord's table. Not only that, but you can enjoy from the Lord's table every day of your life. We're not talking about communion here. We're talking about being friends with God. How many here want to be a friend of God? Say, Lord, help me be. Okay, all right. That means that God can share anything with you. And you can share anything with him. He's not going to condemn you. He's not going to put you down. He wants you to relax around him so he can show you the way it really is. We've been living in a deceptive Truman show. Everybody else is telling you how it is, but Jesus is saying something different. Hey, Truman, did you notice things keep happening in patterns around you all the time? And nobody seems to have a real answer unless they know God. Moving right along. Okay. So let's look just a couple of those things. Okay. You have God inside of you. So let him lead you. And you'll find out your life day by day will become more complete. And all the lustful wants, all the worries and the fears will begin to melt. But you've got to stay consistent. Can you say amen? What happens when you're not consistent on a job? God never fires us. But you will have to learn the, the same thing over again. People say, well, why do the Israelites take 11-day journey? 11 days, just a little over, a little under two weeks. It took them 40 years. Let's, let's think about that. You have so much waiting for you. Please don't take 40 years. Let's get you taught. Let's get you filled up with the things of God so that you can give other people the answers. All right, Psalms 91, and we'll finish with you, okay? Go with me, one of my favorite Psalms. Now, let me just say this to you. If you let Jesus be your shepherd... You meet with him on a regular basis. Not only will he take good care of you, but the protection of Psalms 91 is now your reality. Now, if you read this protection, you'll go, oh my goodness, how come that's not working on me? Because somebody didn't tell you that this is yours. This is every child of God's right to have Psalms 91 manifesting in your life. Here's the key. It doesn't happen overnight. You have to meet with God so he can teach you to stop wiggling so hard. If he's operating on you, please stay long enough for him to sew you up. So he can teach you that a lot of our thinking, a lot of our reacting in the earth is simply a deception. When Jesus came into his own hometown, it says very few people got healed because they didn't see Jesus as the Messiah. They saw him as Joseph's son, the carpenter boy. If you see people's faults more than you see God's good in them, 
won't have very good results. But if you ask God to help you look at the good in everyone and help you to encourage them to be who God wants them to be and not to feel condemned because they're falling short, you'll feel your life being so completely fulfilled, it's hardly even able for me to explain it to you. Hello? He that lendeth to the poor lendeth to the Lord, and the Lord will always repay. Amen. All right, here you go. This is your protection. Say, this is for me. So if you feel you're a little short of this, don't panic. Don't think you're sinning. Just simply ask God to make this a reality, okay? He who dwells, see the word dwell? Dwell means you're there long enough to get zapped with God. Dwell means, how many here have a home? Do you dwell there? Sometimes. But when you're dwelling there, you're there, right? Right. He who dwells in this secret place, secret place is meeting with God. It could be in your car, it doesn't matter. It's meeting with God in the spirit realm. Everyone say spirit realm. Let me ask you, is the devil got the keys to your prayer closet? Well, I used to believe he did. As soon as I'd pray, the devil would be doing something to go against it. I said, Lord, he's in here listening to my prayers. And God says, no, he isn't. I won't let him anywhere near me. Son, when you meet with me, the devil isn't around. But he's telling you he is. Hello? That's for you, sis. It's a word just for you, isn't it? Satan does not go into your prayer closet. He can't. That's the dome of silence. <laughs> if you don't know Get Smart, maybe you can look it up later on. That's the place where you go and you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, and he shrouds you with himself. Satan doesn't want to be anywhere there. He'll wait till you come out. And when you come out, you don't come out the way you go in. When I come out of my prayer closet, I'm so glowing. I mean, my wife is throwing herself up against the wall going, turn it off! <laughs> no. But that's how the devil reacts. I'm going to get that pepperoni stick. Sometime you'll have to ask something else about that. All right, so. The Lord, listen, he who dwells in the secret, in your prayer closet, you got to be there daily. And when meet with the Most High shall abide under the shadow. A shadow is the Old Testament English phrase means you're under God's influence. You're not just covered with a shadow. You're under his influence. When the mafia says, hey, you're under our shadow, that means nobody touch you. Let's stay. Can you say Amen. And uh, you're under, if you all dwell with God, you'll be under his protection. Now, can the devil come in and steal you away? We just got through reading, he can't. He can't snatch you out of his hands. So who's dwelling in your head, these bag of rocks? Let's kick those sacred cows right where it counts, between the pockets. Can you say amen? That's as clean, clean as I get. Anyway, so look, the shadow of the Most High, and he says, I will say of the Lord. Are you saying this about God? You should be saying this. I will say of the Lord. I will tell everybody. He's my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. Instead of telling everybody how you feel, why not say that? That's a good quote. Amen. Are you with me? Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Do you know what the snare of the fowler is? Satan's tactics to trip you up and make you look like a fool. Insert foot in thy mouth. And from that noisome pestilence, you know what noisome pestilence is? COVID is a good example. You get up in the morning, you bind up the evil spirit that goes with that man-made virus, okay? Bind it up, okay? Wherever you go, it runs. Did you know you could do that? You do now. 
and from the noisome pestilence. For he shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will take refuge. His truth and his, oh, excuse me, and it says, I lost my place at, and his truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day. What do you mean terror by night? Have you ever had a bad dream? And about what time was it? After about noon, uh, 12. Why does that happen, Pastor Kerry? Because Satan's a turkey. He'll wait till you're asleep to give you a lie. Hello? So when you go to bed, everyone say, when I go to bed, just simply say, Father, I subject myself to you and I plead the blood of Jesus over my mind and my dreams. I'll wake up refreshed and renewed. Thank you, Lord, and just go to sleep. Let the devil stay up tormenting himself. Are you with me? I love this. Look what it says, it pestilence. It says, and of the pestilence that walks in the darkness and the destruction, it goes on, talks just about this fallen earth. That's what he's saying. A thousand may fall at your right hand and 10,000 at your left, but it shall not come near you. Why? Well, look what he says. Okay, only with your eyes you shall look. What are you looking at, folks? Eyes off the world, eyes off of others, eyes off yourself, eyes on the Lord. You shall look and see the reward of the wicked. They have but a short time. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. See the word dwelling place? Got to meet with them regular. Because if you don't, you're not going to get out of here. You're going to stay in bondage. I mean, God will eventually get you out, but you'll have a lot of bad bondage, and he gets you out. Thank God you'll leave it here. But listen, a lot of people have enough faith to go and to be saved, but they lack the faith to be delivered from their problems. Same faith works for everything. Can you say amen? So you're not lacking the faith, per se, just the know with all. And then it goes on further to say this. And it says, I love this part. It says, you'll see the salvation of your Lord. It says, even the most high, your dwelling place. Verse 10, no evil shall befall you. Say amen. amen. Nor shall any plague come near to your dwelling. Amen. amen. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands shall bear thee up, lest you dash a foot against a stone. He's going to help you from stumbling. You shall... Uh, tread upon the, the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent, you shall trample on her feet. That's just the devil. Devil's going to do his ugly deals, just step on his head and keep on walking. Well, brother, don't you know how powerful the devil is? That's a sack of rocks. Jesus stripped him. And the reason why he seems so powerful is because he's a pusher. He pushes everything. He lies about everything. He doesn't even tell the truth. He makes you feel if you don't get it, you're going to lose it. Today is the special only, Sherry. So if you don't get it today, it'll be gone by tomorrow. So please don't lose me here. Say, I'm absolutely protected. As long as I keep my head in the car. Did you hear what I said and how I said it? You're traveling with God, aren't you? For in him we live and we move. Brian and I are in God's Cadillac. Hallelujah. We're, we're traveling along. Amen. But we get a little cocky and we start hanging out of the window. And, you know, we're liable to get hit with something. Listen, hang with Jesus. He's absolutely cool. He knows every quirk you have. He knows when you're getting high, he doesn't leave you, and I'm not telling you to go get high, but I'm saying there's somebody here that feels guilty because you allowed yourself to get into getting high. The philosophy is God will deliver you of that, but he has to fill you with him so you don't have no other cravings out there. So 
if we don't get you to a place of hearing about God and getting God, then you're going to always be chasing the dragon. We don't want you to do that. I was a dragon chaser. Amen. When I found him, I didn't like him. His name was Satan. Hey, have you ever noticed? And then I'm done. If you go around and you look at all of these civilizations around the world, all these old ones and all these young ones, you'll notice something keeps popping up. And that is either a dragon's head or a serpent's head. Now you know he wants a whole civilization to follow him. And he's been working at it since the beginning of man. So he's a loser. I'm following Jesus. How about you? Well, I got all kinds of problems. Bring him along. God will take him from you. Somebody says, well, I got to give up a lot of stuff before I really could serve the Lord. No, no. You serve the Lord and it will give you up. And so will some of your bad friends. Because you become a religious fanatic. Like Scott. <coughs> I'm joking with you, Scott. Thank God he's my friend. He says, you and I are going to have a talk after service, brother. All right, so let's go on. Hey, I love you dearly. God has great plans for you. How many years since you've been making a little better habits and stuff, have tasted that the Lord has been really blessing you? Last couple of weeks, three or four, maybe months or so, things are picking up and going on. What's going on? Satan is losing more and more hold over you and your family. He's losing more and more hold over people that think they have to be in bondage. And the church is growing and getting more on fire. There's a fire going through the land that's burning up the chaff. But only the sheep that hear his voices are going to be the ones that are really going to catch this laddering movement. There are going to be a lot of Christians saying, Oh, the Lord delayeth his coming. But no, no, no. He's even at the door. So in finishing, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in a time of trouble. I will deliver him and honor him and with long life and I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Say that's me. Now, I got your eyes open or they got them closed? Are you looking at Jesus or are you looking at the problems? Are you talking the situation or are you talking the word? Hello? Are you hung by your tongue or are you loose from your noose? Are you going to shake or bake? You're going to cry or fry? No, you're going to follow Jesus. Say amen, somebody. Listen to the scripture I want to give you. He says, then Jesus said to his disciples, this is to you too. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. First thing you need to do is get yourself out of the picture and get God's will and desire in the picture and God will bring you along for fun. Hello. Deny himself and take up his cross. That means all the way to your death, you're willing even to die you're willing to just live for Jesus and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will actually lose it. But whosoever loses his self-life, for my sake, he will find it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? My dad used to say, these people I've known all my life, they work so hard all, and by the time they're ready to retire, they die because they wore themselves out. Listen, don't work like that. That's not working smart. That's working hard. God doesn't want you to be stressed. Remember Jesus' sweat, grape chops of blood? What was that for? For our mental agony and stress. Jesus said we came from the dust, and because we have sinned and chosen the wrong one, we'll go back to the dust unless you accept Jesus and I'll give you rest and remove your stress. If you desire to follow me, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. What is it gain if a man gain the whole world and lose his own soul? 
What does it profit a man? Hello? Let me ask you something. How important is your relationship with God? To keep it first, then you're going to have the time of your life. Amen. So if you got something out of that this morning, we give the Lord praise. And before they cut me off, and be, before they cut me off, you didn't cut me off yet, did you? Next week, we're going to talk about your soul. We're going to tell you why you have such brain fog. We're going to show you how to operate your thinking in the proper way and line it up with the scripture. We're going to even describe your brain. I'm going to show you the compartments of it, not according to science, but according to the Bible. And then we're going to talk about your soul, your mind, will, emotions, appetite, intellect, personality, and your drives. So God bless you. Lord, keep you. Watch over you. Does anybody here need physical healing in your body? Would you stand up? Let's pray for you. You know, a lot of people say, well, why don't you have altar calls? Because they end up so long and they burn so many people out when I could just meet with them and everybody else go on in their business. See, sometimes what they did back in the olden days wasn't always good. It's just what they knew to do. Hello? In the newer days, you should be able to get everything you need sitting right there in that chair. Hello? Because who lives in you? The Lord will keep you, bless you. Thank you. People like Derek, I could use them in this sermon. You've got to get to tape, Noah. Amen. So, Lord, just thank you for them. And most of all, bless the pizza. Lord God, and, and just our time of, of fellowshipping. And thank you so much, Lord God, for all the wonderful people. In Jesus' name, and you all said? Amen. Amen.